Hi, I'm Lisa Prather, and welcome to The Voice of Health with our host, Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where lives are changed every day through the natural approach to health care. Today our show is about the diathermy and its benefits. And um, we have two large diathermy units in our office. We have quite a few people. They're usually busy all day long. Mm-hmm. Um, and so let's talk about that. What, Dr. Prather, what is diathermy? Well, uh, there are three different kinds of uh, diathermy out there. There is a uh, shortwave diathermy, which uh, I'm not going to go into all the uh, science behind all that. But uh, shortwave diathermy, there's uh, the ultrasound diathermy, and then there's microwave diathermy. Uh, the one that we uh, Does utilize, it cook, too? Uh, it, it it does. Uh, uh, usually within the uh, medical uh, model, uh, what they use is diathermy as a heating device. Oh, okay. But uh, there is so much more to the diathermy than that, and we utilize it not so much as a heating device, uh, but as a device to increase the circulation and the uh, lymphatic flow. Mm-hmm. So uh, we utilize it for anything that uh, could benefit from increased blood flow and getting the lymphatic system going. And the one that's the best for that is the shortwave. So okay. we use the, the shortwave, and that has to do with the, a certain spectrum. Uh, radio waves, electromagnetic waves fall into that category. And the diathermy is a uh, coils. And the way that we like to uh, describe it to people is it's a... Uh, uh, a large coiled magnet that produces a, uh, um, a short wave uh, uh, beam that goes into the body. Uh, the main thing that uh, we like it is increasing circulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a great benefit. Great benefit. And the, the unit that we have, there are all sorts of different sizes, how much power comes out. Uh, it was bef- right around the 1950s before they got into the antibiotics. They developed uh, very high-powered uh, diathermy units that were used to treat pneumonia, mm. and uh, they had to be. It was the uh, treatment for pneumonia at that time. Uh, once they started with the uh, with the antibiotics, then they were able to. They stopped using it in that type of a situation. But ours are, are the big, powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, diathermy units that uh, you you don't see as much anymore. Now, if someone didn't want to go on antibiotics, would it be helpful? Yeah, there are. We have patients who have even you know with the people come in with uh, pneumonia, mm-hmm. and uh, we use it uh, in conjunction with antibiotics uh, because you can get a better effect. And then there are patients who can't take antibiotics. Right. We've had uh, quite a few patients who've come through who. Um, even after many rounds of antibiotics, still were not able to get their pneumonia taken care of or whatever, you know, infection mm-hmm. in the lungs that they had, we were able to use the diathermy and actually clear it up. Wow. So it's more of a natural, you know. It, it's, a, it's a natural way of approaching it. You don't have the uh, negatives of the antibiotics and the side effects that can be involved. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a very safe type of device to use if, you know, done properly and uh, can have a huge effect on that. Hmm. So what is the history of the diathermy? Well, the diathermy first unit was uh, developed back in 1890, and uh, there was a uh, a physician who uh, dedicated his life to the study of diathermy and and had really felt that this was going to be the answer to the majority of people's problems. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things that he became quite famous uh, what he would do is hook up a diathermy to a unit to himself and put a light bulb in his mouth and the light bulb would light up <laughs> <laughs> just as a demonstration do you do of that no, no I, <laughs> I don't do that but you interestingly enough we can uh, you know have a diathermy unit and put it in a patient's hand and the light bulb will light up <laughs> uh, interesting isn't it uh-huh yeah uh, you should it, start doing that <laughs> <laughs> so that's just one of the little demonstrations of uh, you know, how the body uh, uh, conducts that electromagnetic energy through mm-hmm. the system, uh, that it does uh, increase the coils and, and has a big effect. And it was uh, supposed to be like this uh, amazing type of a device that would cure everything. That was sort of how he had 
uh, brought it about. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were all sorts of claims that were associated with it. And, um, you know, finding out, and, and again, things can be overblown. Right. You know, that's one of the things that, that when happens. When you hear cures all or... Right. Yeah. That's you know, a they're, red they're, flag. That's a red flag. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, he was uh, legitimately uh, excited about it, uh, had all sorts of uh, different type of uh, capabilities. One of the things that... Um, uh, it became famous for was a, a cure for a uh, cancer tumor. It was reported that a uh, tumor had disappeared by the use of uh, the diathermy. Mm-hmm. And there was all sorts of speculation that we would be able to uh, use it almost as a surgical device where you wouldn't have to cut someone open, mm-hmm. but you would be able to uh, put a beam of the shortwave diathermy into a unit and actually use it as uh, almost a... Uh, uh, a bloodless surgery. Mm-hmm. Uh, the capabilities of doing that uh, just didn't materialize. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it is very true that uh, one of the things is you can sort of superheat uh, cancer, mm-hmm. and uh, it uh, will, um, you know, it, it does die. That is one of the the new types of treatments that they're looking at for cancer. Uh-huh. Um, Shortwave diathermy does have uses along those lines, but it does have a problem because it increases blood circulation, mm. which can be a contraindication for cancer. So, yeah, uh, it's it's not something that um, is recommended for cancer situations anymore because there's sort of like two different types of uh, mm-hmm. of uh, things that can occur, and it's just not controllable at this time. Right. Well. Was it considered a quack device at one time? It was. A, it had become a quack device. Uh, you know, when you were getting into the uh, 1950s, there was a claims from uh, it would cure from anything from A to Z. Mm-hmm. And whenever you make those broad types of claims, then things uh, lose its credibility. So uh, if you go to the quack museum. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see diathermy. There's a quack there. museum. There is actually a quack museum. Where's the quack museum? It, it's actually here in Indianapolis. They oh, do really? have it. Yeah. Uh, wow. We'll have to go. I know. I know. It's it's really <laughs> quite a fascinating type of a uh, of a uh, uh, show just to kind of see what's all in there. Uh-huh. But diathermy units uh, were uh, classified as a quack uh, as a quack device basically because it was oversold. Mm-hmm. You know, there were claims that were made for it uh, that weren't really legitimate because some of the changes are, you know, that we see in our office or uh, people would kind of go, well, that that was just miraculous. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, we've we've had so many different people come in and you've seen that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it it's not a miraculous device in itself. It, the the miraculous ability of the body to heal itself. Right. That's, that's what's miraculous. That's that's what's miraculous, and uh, the the mechanisms of the diathermy that we utilize because we use a lower setting, mm-hmm. and all we're trying to do is to relax the arteries and the lymphatic flow, and as we increase that circulation in there, the body is then able to do its job. Mm-hmm. So. Anything, uh, the way that we think of uh, utilizing the diathermy unit is any time that we're trying to increase circulation or drain lymphatic uh, or get the the flow going, Mm -hmm. uh, that's when we can utilize the diathermy unit and get some very, very um, amazing benefits. Not that the diathermy is is doing it, Mm -hmm. but the body is then able to uh, bring about the homeostasis as the body's able to bring about homeostasis, then you get some amazing healing properties that actually take place. Now, you said in your office you keep it on a low setting. Why is that? Uh, we're um, Well, most of the time we're not trying to superheat the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, lower setting, uh, it's much safer. There's not a chance of any type of burning. Mm-hmm. Uh, we use a... Um, yeah, because those big drum mags get warm. Uh, they they definitely get warm, mm-hmm. and it's not necessary to go to the higher settings to get the blood circulation right. going. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, if you go into the higher settings, you're, you're looking at more of a superheating type of a device, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, is, there are other ways to accomplish those types of changes. Okay. So what is the diathermy normally used for in uh, medical offices? Uh, normally, uh, uh, they're not using it necessarily for the circulation, but uh -huh. you would use it on a muscle uh, that you want to relax uh, joints, mm -hmm. uh, very good for uh, any type of pain or arthritic joints. Mm -hmm. uh, it can really help out to uh, loosen it up, make it a lot easier for the <clears throat> physical therapist or occupational therapist to uh, work with a muscle once it uh, is relaxed and, and heated up. Uh, any type of a, uh, a joint condition, uh, bursitis, it's, a, it's very good for, uh, for arthritis, uh, any types of pains in the joints, uh, that's when it's usually used medically. Mm, okay. Well, up next, let's talk about its common uses of the diathermy unit in your office. You can win a free 60-minute massage in a relaxing spa at the Prather Practice. Each month, we have a drawing to give away a free massage to one of our lucky Facebook and Twitter fans. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. What is ECP therapy? ECP stands for External Counterpulsation Therapy. And just to put it into a nutshell, uh, ECP is an aerobic exercise machine. Now you sit there and say, well, why do you need an aerobic mm -hmm. exercise machine? Uh, it is the number one treatment for cardiovascular disease. If you look at the research and want to find out, well, how do I fix my cardiovascular disease, you know, whatever it might be, always within the uh, scientific literature, uh, aerobic exercise is one of the most proven, most effective means of reversing cardiovascular disease. So, but the problem is, is I have people who, uh, I sit there and, and I look at them and I say, well, you know, uh, you know, what do I do about this, this, uh, problem that I have, doc? And I said, well, go out and run five miles, you know, every day. <laughs> and of course they all laugh because, uh, you know, it, it took every effort that they had from going to the waiting room into the, uh, into the exam room right. and they're out of breath. So, uh, that, that didn't work. So what the uh, what was actually done was develop a machine that actually simulates the effects on the body of aerobic exercise, and that's where ECP comes in. And it, what occurs uh, with ECP is that there's actually a, a second heart kind of put into the into the body. Mm -hmm. It's on the outside, but uh, as the uh, heart goes into relaxation. That's when it actually gets its uh, blood. So what we do is we actually have uh, blood pressure cuffs around the legs. It uh, presses on, on, the, uh, on the legs, and we get a huge amount of blood that goes back up to the heart. And the heart is very regenerative, and you get about 10 times as much oxygen uh, with this particular type of treatment than uh, what you normally would. And you get a regeneration of the heart. You also get a, uh, a cleaning out of the arteries. And you actually get a huge amount of changes in the whole physiology of the body. So all the benefits of uh, aerobic exercise are actually found in ECP, which are absolutely the number one way that you can uh, be able to reverse cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and many other problems. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. And I'm feeling You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice, the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. Today our show is about the diathermy and its benefits. And diathermy spelled D-I-A-T-H-E-R-M-Y. I like to 
you know, spell things that Absolutely. people might not have heard of. And um, Dr. Prather, let's talk about its common uses um, in your office. I know we have two units that um, are mobile. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they're movable. Um, they have two large black drums on them. Mm-hmm. Um, I benefit greatly from the diathermy when I need it. Oh, yeah, you utilize it a lot. Yeah, it's usually when I'm detoxing or mm-hmm. I have congestion in my liver or my gallbladder, and uh, it really it helps that whole process. Oh, yeah. You know, of yeah. congestion. So what are its most common uses? Uh, the most common thing that we use it for is uh, drainage of the ears. Mm. Uh, that uh, has a very quick, uh, very beneficial type of a uh, 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 help. Uh, anyone who's been uh, gone up in an airplane and had their ears hurt mm-hmm. uh, knows uh, how beneficial, if that was drained out, could well, be. Well, we just had a patient come in yesterday that got the treatment before because she's always had ear problems. Sure. We gave her um, homeopathic ABC. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she did a diathermy unit. She said she um, she flew out to Arizona. She had no problems. And there's an awful lot of patients. I, we have patients that I haven't seen for a year and say, I'm going to be going on a flight. Uh, I need a diathermy treatment on my ears before I, you know, the day before I do it mm-hmm. so that my ears don't stop up and become painful. And for anyone who's had that happen, uh, that is, is something that they're aware of and, and don't want to repeat. Uh, great for that, but uh, you know, as you're talking about children, uh, otitis media, mm-hmm. uh, the ear, the ear pain, the ear infections. For any mom who's been up with a little one screaming the entire night, uh, knows how wonderful it would be to get that under control. <laughs> yeah, I, I think about uh, one little guy who who was about who just starting to walk. Uh, they brought him in, and he had a terrible ear infection. Uh, the antibiotics, you know, hadn't really kicked in or done anything at that point. Uh, you know, and they had heard that uh, we do take care of otitis media and uh, mm-hmm. that that, you know, that we could make a pretty quick cure. And uh, the uh, husband was a little bit skeptical, but mm-hmm. they both came in because mom had been up all night and didn't want to drive in. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and she looked like, oh, help me. Uh-huh. And the little guy was just, you know, thrashing and. Uh, in so much pain. So we brought him in and 15 minutes on the diathermy. Mm. Uh, and, you know, they had to kind of hold him in place up against it. And then uh, after the 15 minutes, he got up and uh, he was laughing and, mm. uh, you know, uh, uh, wanting to be held by mom and, you know, looking around and waving at everybody. And, and they just kind of looked at me like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> How did this occur? Uh-huh. And we find that 15 minutes on the diathermy will just take away the pain. Mm-hmm. Just like that. Yeah, and, and kids do fine. They just have to lay there because the um, drum comes right up to there. It has to, to be ear. right yeah. up against there. And it's so warm. Yeah, and it's comfortable. A lot of people fall asleep on it. Oh, most people fall asleep. And it relaxes the child after a little while. There is a there is a uh, also other different types of, of changes that occur in the body with the diathermy. There is a lot of relaxation uh, chemicals that are released because of the the diathermy uh, mm-hmm. uh, effects on the body. And then uh, the way that that works, uh, interestingly, is that the uh, it opens up the lymphatic tissue, which mm-hmm. is the the back up and through there. It will relax the eustachian tube. It will um, increase blood flow, so that all those three things. Uh, Diathermy also has an antibiotic and an antiviral and antifungal effect. Ah. So you will actually you you will get uh, death of bacteria, viruses, Mm. and fungal uh, by the diathermy. Uh, The uh, they have shown that there is a um, that there is a, uh, a killing effect of mm-hmm. the electromagnetic energy that comes from there. That those short wave, those. So it has a, a everything that can be going wrong with the uh, ear at mm-hmm. that point uh, is being taken care of. 
Well, you've always said like the eustachian tube in the ear is the same type of smooth muscle that's in the large intestine. Sure. Correct? And we've had shows on otitis media, and really most of the time the, the cause is coming from the gut. So for a long-term type of use, you know, uh, benefits you have to clear up the gut. for. The but I know for me, if I'm starting to feel congestion in the ear, and right. that, that should be a red flag to people. Because if you don't clear that out, you're going to get sick. You're right. going to get sick because it's going to spread up to the sinuses, down into the throat. Because at eustachian tube, there's a connection all the way through. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is there's supposed to be a drainage that occurs on that, and that's one of the things that uh, people come in. We have a specialized adjustment for that. It opens up that eustachian tube. It opens up that eustachian tube. You can actually hear it open. Uh-huh. Uh, people always, the first time they have it, they kind of jump and say, what was that? <laughs> uh, but the, uh, then I... I always suggest a, a diathermy treatment along with that because of the huge effects on that and the immediate type of changes that occur. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, because it just it starts draining. It has, you know, because of that circulation. Sure. I kind of say it's like the congestion machine. If there's it, any congestion in the body, it absolutely. will release and, and then release we, it. And then we also use it on the sinuses. Mm-hmm. Uh, along with the eustachian tube, usually the sinuses will be backed up. And we have a lot of patients who come in and sign up uh, whenever their sinuses back up, that they uh, get the uh, diathermy uh, uh, mm-hmm. utilized, and they find uh, immediate relief mm-hmm. for their sinuses, where there's a, a, a change where that, that congestion is gone. Now, I know when you do the ears... Um, you do one drum at a time on the ear, correct? Correct. correct. And why is that? Uh, you don't, if you have two drums on, on each side, you get a different effect where there's a specialized heating in where they meet in the center. Uh-huh. So you can dial that in, and that's very, very effective in those types of, of areas, but you don't want that on the head. Mm-hmm. That, uh, that can cause problems with the eyes. It can cause other different types of problems. So... Uh, again, having it set up properly and someone who knows how to utilize it is is very important to avoid any type of uh, uh, injury that could occur. Usually, any treatments, either fifteen minutes to thirty minutes. Usually, no more than thirty minutes. Right. right. Usually, uh-huh. not over thirty minutes on the treatment. So it's something that uh, is very easy to do, safe, uh, very effective, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, people just. Uh, are amazed by the changes that occur in their sinuses and those eustachian tubes and in those ears. And, and moms can bring in, get their child done, and, and they're good. Yeah, they usually bring a book and read, and then the child sure. settles down. And Yeah, it's great. And then that child's not continually going on antibiotic after antibiotic, destroying their gut and right. their Weakening the immune, immune system. system. Uh, you can cause permanent, too many antibiotic treatments can cause permanent damage to the uh, immune system. Uh, much better way of treatment is uh, the diathermy unit. Mm-hmm. Are there any age restrictions in using the diathermy unit? Uh, no, there. Again, the the settings uh, we use these uh, the diathermy unit on on babies. Uh, of course, we use a very low setting, uh, very very safe uh, in the in the proper hands, and uh, it doesn't matter the age of the baby bringing it in for the uh, ear infections. Uh, we can utilize that and uh, get uh, immediate results. Mm-hmm. I mean. It's nice to have the ear cleared up in 15 minutes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the diathermy, it just costs $35. Right. right. Yeah. Well, I think it's... Well, I, yeah, it I, is. I actually have I no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what yeah. it costs for the treatment. But yes, I, I, it costs $35. For it's, a, it's actually cheaper than an antibiotic. Say yes, honey. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. What about its benefits for vertigo? I... Uh, that is another thing that we use the uh, diathermy unit on. Uh, one of the worst things that uh, my patients come in with uh, that probably d- destroys their life more than anything else is, is vertigo. Mm. Uh, it's a very awful type of disease to, uh, to be having. Um, and the, uh, the diathermy is an essential portion of, of the treatment. I was treating a patient for uh, vertigo, and uh, I, you know, had recommended the diathermy, and they wanted to hold up on that uh, just for time's sake more than anything else because the cost really wasn't a factor. 
I said, well, give it a try, but usually I need to do the diathermy along with that to get the good drainage, uh, permanent da- drainage on the ears. So we had started the medication that was associated with the vertigo. Uh, we were doing the adjustments and the, uh, the uh, other different types of work. And, uh, you know, they were saying, you know, they had definitely had some improvement, but it wasn't up to the to probably about a 50% said, you know, look, we're not going to continue unless you start the diathermy. And after the first treatment, uh, they came out and they said, I don't have vertigo. Mm-hmm. This is the, you know, the, the first time in four years that I, I, you know, not experienced vertigo. So they signed up for that. And uh, all of our patients with vertigo, uh, the diathermy on the ears is, is absolutely essential. Mm-hmm. to get that under control and, and a very big missing part of the treatment because the, the, the drainage in through there, the relief of the middle ear uh, is essential to have to get the vertigo under control. So uh, if someone is, uh, the, the things that we're looking at is anyone with any type of ear problems, uh, uh, you know, ear infection, otitis media, going up into the sinuses and vertigo, uh, also tinnitus. Mm. Uh, it's tinnitus, helpful for tinnitus. Uh, extremely important for tinnitus. Uh-huh. So any of our patients with tinnitus, uh, the uh, recommendations are always to have diathermy because the diathermy does make an absolutely incredible difference with the tinnitus and uh, getting that under control. And, you know, um, you're talking about that one patient. It was a combination of other treatments. Yeah. And until right. she added that diathermy, did she see you know, the results. Right. It, and we don't just use for the otitis media, you know, just the diathermy. There's other things that we recommend along those lines. Uh, we try to deal with the body in a holistic type of way. And the diathermy, again, is involved with circulation and lymphatic drainage. And any time that we can add that in, then uh, and those are conditions that need to be worked on. Uh, we'll get the effects that we need. Okay. Well, up next, let's talk about diathermy and its effectiveness with circulation. Listen to the Voice of Health Radio on your smartphone or tablet on all of the top radio apps available. Tune in Radio, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. You can find these apps and more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is the Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. Laughter is the best medicine. But if they are, you know, doing some sort of medical thing to you, you want to be in a, the smallest room that they have, I think. You don't want to be in the largest room that they have. You know what I mean? The, you ever see these operating theaters that they have with, like, stadium seating? You, want the, you don't want them doing anything to you that makes other doctors go, I have to see this. <laughs> are you kidding? Are they going to really do that to them? Are there seats? Can we get in? Do they scalp tickets to these things? I got two for the Winslow tumor. I got two. Are you frustrated by not getting to the root cause of your health issue? Are you tired of not knowing why you're always fatigued? Are you wanting to say no to toxic drugs? Have you lost hope? Are you just tired of being sick and tired? At the Prather Practice, we want you to know that we have the answers for you. We offer the alternative to the disease care model. We are the drug-free model to health and wellness. At the Prather Practice, we look for the underlying cause of your health problem and not just the symptomatology. Through thorough diagnostics, we find your individual health blueprint for your treatment. Where the disease care model is symptom-based, the structure function model we practice gets to the root of your health issue. The Prather Practice is the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. Our integrated practice offers you the most treatment options to restore your health and your hope. Learn more about the Prather Practice by calling 317-848-8048 or learn more on our website at the Voice of Health Radio about diathermy unit and its benefits. Let's talk about the diathermy's effectiveness in circulation. And we're, we're talking about, you know, neuropathy, Renard's disease, um, but how can it help? Well, the- interestingly enough, I've, one of the things that is really, really important for diathermy and, and underutilized is increasing the circulation. And we've had patients who were scheduled to have amputations of toes, uh, even feet, because of the loss of circulation due to uh, diabetic neuropathy. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were able to have a series of uh, diathermy treatments, uh, usually about 24. 
And uh, afterwards, the vascular surgeon told the guy who was scheduled to have his left foot cut off, uh, you've got better circulation than I do. Hmm. So wow. if you set up the diathermy, have the right settings, which, which we know and understand, uh, the, you can get a, uh, uh, you, you don't have to go through the amputations that are involved. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that isn't uh, put out there as it should be, which uh, was very frustrating. Uh, you know, it's just like this gentleman said, you know, I was scheduled to have my foot cut off. Mm -hmm. And uh, 24 sessions uh, with, the, with the diathermy, and uh, the vascular surgeon says I, he's got, uh, I've got better circulation than, than he did. Did he tell him about the diathermy unit? He did. <laughs> and uh, he's, uh, the guy said, well, I would never heard of that before, mm -hmm. you know, that that would be effective. And that was one of the th old things that the diathermy unit was used for, uh, was for the uh, diabetic neuropathy with the loss of circulation down into the uh, feet. And uh, so if someone's scheduled to have their... Uh, toes cut off or uh, foot cut off because of uh, lack of circulation. You have to call it cut off. Uh, uh, amputation. Amputation. Okay. <laughs> uh, amputated. Uh, then uh, the the diathermy is something that uh, definitely should be looked at, and uh, it, it it's been effective on everyone so far. And you talked about twenty four sessions, but when you um, you know look at different patients. The amount of sessions would be different for different it can issues be. that they have, correct? It can be. That's that's sort of the standard that we use before we actually retest it. For circulation? For circulation. Like for severe circulation. Otitis media would be a different. Oh, yeah. otitis media, you see it in immediate difference just that day. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, the, uh, the, 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 the people with uh, loss of circulation can tell a, uh, a big difference right away uh, mm -hmm. you know he says why well, i've got i've got pink toes now i haven't had pink toes in a long time mm -hmm. so he says obviously it's doing something so uh, and not only just for the circulation but for those who are have diabetic neuropathy uh the diathermy is uh, extremely extremely beneficial well i was thinking of the woman with uh the young oh, she's a young woman was having problems with her feet mm -hmm. and um I don't even know how many sessions she had. Not maybe one or two. Sure. And had you want to tell that story? Right. She she came in and uh, had uh, uh, actually Renaud's disease, mm -hmm. and we uh, she says it was during the winter, and always she said my feet are just always painful. Uh, it's just a, a, a nummy pain sensation during the entire winter. And uh, it, it's just almost impossible to, to bear during the, the, that time. And I said, well, we can take care of that. Uh, let's go on over, get you a session with, uh, you know, the diathermy. She said, well, anything, you know, if it can help. And uh, she walked out with a big smile on her face, and she says, the, it's gone. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, came back. Uh, I think we did it one more time, but uh, didn't have a reoccurrence. Right, so let's talk about its benefits with Renaud's disease. Well, it, Renaud's, of course, can be a, it's an autoimmune disease where uh, people get uh, numbness, tingling, cold feet, cold hands. Uh, autoimmune, where the circulation is, uh, is lost into the hands and feet, uh, can become a, a definite problem. Uh, and it's usually kicked off by cold. Uh, so during the winter, that's not the best time to be having Renaud's. Mm -hmm. And the uh, diathermy units uh, can make an immediate change uh, for Renaud. So anyone who's suffering from Renaud's disease, having someone around who has a di has a proper diathermy unit, a lot of them are actually too small, uh, not powerful enough to make the changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the shortwave diathermy is the one that uh, works on that, uh, not the uh, microwave or the ultrasound. Uh, so diathermy with a shortwave uh, diathermy unit uh, that uh, has the power behind it uh, can uh, fix the uh, Renaud's disease. Yeah, that's interesting because there's not a lot, you know, out there for them. Uh, not a lot of help. Yes, there, there. It's something. It's something that just isn't uh, well treated uh, medically. You know, they don't have anything that can 
get that under control. And it's such a non-invasive, uh, easy type of a of something to do with no possibility of side effects. Uh, why wouldn't anyone give it a try to see if they can get some changes? Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. the changes are very quick and, and uh, last quite well. Well, how about um, using the diathermy with neuropathy? I uh, yes, and neuropathy is a is a huge problem. Uh, we've actually get uh, referrals uh, for from oncologists, uh, from uh, neurologists for neuropathy. Uh, we do a combination of acupuncture and diathermy, and uh, you get very very good results. Uh, mm-hmm. People uh, have a dramatic changes along those lines because neuropathy is a very very difficult thing to change and medically it's it's not uh, it's not well taken care of uh, you do have some medications that are helpful but uh, we find uh, more limited results with that whereas with the acupuncture and diathermy combination uh, the results are are much much greater and much more long lasting and then of course you don't have the side effects of the pharmaceuticals mm-hmm. So very safe to, to, to do, and uh, it's nice to see the changes on people. Yeah. Now, uh, talked touched a little bit on this with pneumonia. It was very helpful with pneumonia. Um, do you um, use it for lung issues? Yes. Uh, lung is a, one of the main things that diathermy... Uh, especially the large units that we have, uh, was something that every hospital had. And all of their pneumonia, um, any type of bronchitis, uh, uh, any type of a lung uh, disease process, Mm -hmm. except cancer, uh, they have uh, the the diathermy is extremely effective. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had patients who were, as I had mentioned before, uh, who had uh, come in, uh, referred in, uh, because uh, the antibiotics just were not getting the lung disease, uh, the lung infection, the pneumonia under control. Uh, we started uh, on the diathermy unit. Uh, after Usually after about six sessions, we can see a change in the uh, spirometry, the lung function test, uh, because we tested about every six uh, visits on the diathermy. And after about uh, uh, 24 sessions, uh, then that uh, unremitting um, um, uh, pneumonia that this person was having that was probably going to kill them because they had already been through every single antibiotic that was available uh, was cleared up. Mm. So uh, people with uh, lung problems, uh, lung diseases, uh, chronic lung infections, uh, the diathermy is... uh, is something that can just make a a, a world of difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so those that are, are suffering with uh, chronic bronchitis, uh, we have people, have patients who come in. I, I've got a guy who comes in uh, once a year. He always has problems during the uh, the springtime, uh, starting in February with mm-hmm. his lungs. I think a lot of people do. Yeah, that's when that's the most common type of time that uh, people have the issues. Uh, he had had a, uh, a, a histoplasmosis infection, mm. uh, and histoplasmosis can affect the eyes, the uh, lungs, and the, the kidneys. And uh, is not that related to birds? Or yes. Birds uh, droppings? Well, actually, histoplasmosis is endemic to Indianapolis mm. because Indianapolis was a swamp, mm. and it I was. Believe it. It was a uh, it was a major uh, um, bird. It would be almost like a bird sanctuary now, mm-hmm. because this was a a place that the birds would the, the migratory birds would stop and stay, and um, they defecated in the swamp. Mm-hmm. And then what what happened was when uh, the settlers came here, they drained the swamp because it was good farmland. Mm-hmm. But any time that you do any type of digging through the ground in through here, then you're going to kick up a lot of histoplasmosis. So almost everybody in Indianapolis shows up positive for histoplasmosis because of that. Mm. Uh, so uh, he had uh, chronic histoplasmosis and uh, came in about two, three years 
uh, in a row, and each year uh, his histo, his lung infections were much, much better, and uh, till he just didn't need them anymore by the fourth year. Wow, very interesting. And didn't have to go through because every year he had to go through uh, IV antibiotics just to get that under control. And uh, with the ult- with the uh, diathermy, he didn't need that and felt so much better. Hmm. Well, up next, let's talk about the diathermy use. Uh, for detoxification. Never miss an episode of The Voice of Health so that you can stay informed and empowered about your health. Get a podcast of our show automatically delivered to you every week by signing up for our show on iTunes. You can find that link on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. And don't forget, thevoiceofhealthradio.com has complete archives of all of our past episodes with an audio library of information to help you add more life to your years and more years to your life. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. One of the most basic fundamentals that uh, that I base my practice off of is something called the atlas orthogonal mm-hmm. uh, technique. It's a type of adjustment. It's a, it's a specific type of an adjustment, and orthogonal means at right angles. In other words, the, the head is sitting on top of your of your body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Uh, because about 80% of the people don't have that. Mm-hmm. And it has a probably one of the greatest effects on the entire system. You're saying 80% of people don't have the right... The atlas sitting on, on underneath the uh, skull. Now, the uh, atlas proper. we're talking about is the first vertebrae. First vertebrae under the occiput. So, uh, a basic type of thing, and, and what I found is that that probably has the biggest effect on the health of an individual over anything else. Mm-hmm. So you can actually make the greatest amount of changes with the, uh, with the atlas, getting it in the right position, because it's right there at the uh, base of the skull, which is the uh, center of the autonomic nervous system. Mm. The base uh, which, of the skull. Which actually controls all the functions of the body. So the atlas orthogonal is uh, the, one of the big bases of what we do and has the biggest effect on the health of the individual. And really to make any types of changes in the rest of the system to help the body to work correctly, uh, that's the beginning of where you need to start. And mm-hmm. when I'm actually working with patients, I make sure that that's in position. Now, of course, 20% of the people don't have a problem with that. Uh-huh. So we go on to So not other. everybody that walks in the office has that issue. And nobody, Not everybody who walks into the office has that issue. But getting that corrected is absolutely essential to, for me to make the other postural changes and to make the changes in the system. And I want to um, bring up here, you're, you're board certified in the Atlas Orthogonal Technique, the only one in the state of Indiana. Um, got your training down in Atlanta. Um, right. So extensive training. I was one of the original six mm-hmm. in that. So uh, that's a huge basis. So th- there's a very strong belief system in that. And then also I had my greatest amount of changes in my health through this particular type mm-hmm. of adjustment. So uh, I can speak from a personal type of standpoint. Find out how the Atlas Orthogonal Chiropractic Adjustment can transform your health. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. It's a beautiful- You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where our mission is restoring hope to our patients. We're talking today about diathermy unit and its benefits. Um, Very interesting, Dr. Prather. I'm even thinking of other ways um, that will be helpful for patients. You know, some patients I'm seeing that just really have those tight, tight muscles. I was working with someone, hamstrings. I don't think I've been stretched for years. <laughs> we get those in there. I told him your whole backside needs to be stretched. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it feels like a, a brick. Uh, that's not a good thing. It's supposed to feel like flesh, isn't it? Right. <laughs> right. And I think, um, you know, maybe with him getting those diathermy um, 
drums, the, you know, the unit on there would help really with the muscle. And do you find that being of benefit? Of course. If you have chronically tight muscles, then you pretty well drain the blood out of them. Yeah. So you don't get the ionic transfer for the muscles to be able to relax. So any way that you can increase circulation into the muscles, you can get relaxation. Mm -hmm. It's one of the main problems with chronically tight um, musculature is getting the blood flow back in there so that they actually have the availability to to relax. Right. That ionic transfer is essential. Get some pink in there. And get some pink in there <laughs> and uh, get those muscles relaxed. Well, we're talking, too, about um, how diathermy is helpful for detoxification. And, um, you know, many of our people are coming with um, your detoxing liver quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm using the diathermy along with that helps. I know for me, if I have any congestion, and I can tell right away, sure. you know, if I have congestion and I might get on, get on it during lunchtime, uh, oh, yeah. the unit. And, and for our listeners out there, those drums, how big are the drums? They're about 12 inches going across. And they're, they're um, round. Round. Two mm-hmm. round. And, and they go on the different areas of your body. Sure. And they feel nice and warm. More. Yes, <laughs> like enough I said, to put you to sleep. Oh yeah, if you if you want to fall asleep, uh, it, <laughs> we have a lot of modalities that put people to sleep. They do. Even the acupuncture. <laughs> oh yeah, the acupuncture is uh, a huge uh, mm-hmm. thing for. It. Matter of fact, I have a lot of people come in for insomnia. Uh, I, the, you know, when we were talking about liver detoxification, uh, we do blood work. You know, to check the liver. That's one of the main things that we're looking at because if the liver isn't isn't functioning correctly and it can be uh, congested where the liver enzymes are, are low or it can be inflamed uh, in a, a, a hepatitis type of situation where you have inflammation caused by a lot of different types of, of areas where the liver enzymes are, are too high, the diathermy is excellent for both of those. Mm. Uh, when we, if you just did the diathermy in those types of situations besides the supplements and the different types of liver detoxes that we do uh, you get uh, a balance uh, achieved by mm-hmm. doing the diathermy it does bring those liver enzymes back into uh, alignment and that's something that uh, with severe types of congestion or severe type of inflammation in the liver that we require people to do uh, on the uh, on the over the liver, uh, because it increases the circulation, and as you get the circulation uh, going through the liver, then you have an incredible healing process that takes place. Mm. So the liver is all about detoxification, right? And we can you can actually palpate the liver, and if people are very congested or very inflamed, it's a very tender area, right? So it's easy to physically check to see how things are going. And we put the uh, the diathermy over that, and immediately afterwards, uh, there is there's a release of pain. Uh, people who are uh, that we start on detoxifications, especially if they have uh, large amounts of infections, heavy metal toxicity, anything like that, and uh, people can start to get sick mm-hmm. uh, from the detoxification. So what we do is we add the diathermy, and that's one of the main things that we use it for, uh, over the liver and the spleen to help with the detoxification. And uh, people no longer then have that that feeling of nausea, Mm -hmm. that kind of sicky feeling, because the detoxification is going so much better. Yeah, fatigued feeling. And uh, almost everybody who gets on that, uh, especially over the when we're doing it over the liver, that there's uh, also uh, I've had people with insomnia, mm-hmm. and after a treatment with a diathermy, they say, "Can I just take that home? I think I would sleep <laughs> through." It. So I can't fall asleep, and I was on there for half an hour, and I felt like I almost had a full night's sleep. Mm. Uh, it just put me out so fast. Uh, I, I struggle so hard to get to sleep. Yeah. So uh, it, it's it's amazing how that works. Mm-hmm. But the uh, uh, congestion on the liver, that's a very, very important type of area. Uh, you know, it's a great way to prevent cancer. Uh, the liver toxicity is one of the major things that occur when cancer 
because the body's no longer able to detox itself. Interesting. So keeping the liver clean is one of the most important things that we look for uh, in uh, someone's overall evaluation of their health. And the, uh, the diathermy is one of the absolute best ways to accomplish that. Mm-hmm. Well, how does the diathermy help in reducing infection? Uh, the diathermy has a, a direct effect on the, uh, on the viruses, bacteria, and fungus. Mm-hmm. Uh, where it does uh, actually kill them. So that is a, a great effect right there. That's helpful. Very helpful. <laughs> but also there's an increase in blood flow and lymphatic flow. Mm-hmm. And both of those are transporters of the white blood cells and the uh, all the different aspects of the immune system. So you get a tremendous amount of greater exposure to the immune system by adding diathermy into the area. Uh, bladder infections... Uh, very common type of thing that we will use uh, the diathermy on because it, one, uh, kills the, uh, especially for chronic bladder infections that don't seem to respond to the normal types of treatments, then we will uh, add in the the diathermy and uh, there is, one, the irritation that you have with the bladder infection Mm -hmm. uh, goes away with the diathermy treatment. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, They... uh, People who have chronic irritation, which is would really piss you off, but, no, it's, <laughs> but it's it's annoying. Yeah, right. And that goes away mm-hmm. after you know people, you know, women and men get up and they go. Uh, men with prostate uh, infections, prostatitis, get up and say, "Oh, wow, I'm not in pain anymore. Or, mm-hmm. I don't have that irritation." Uh, and they said, "Does it work that quickly?" And I said, "Yes, it actually does." So in chronic types of uh, different types of infections, uh, sinus infections, uh, ear infections, lung infections, um, uh, for, the, uh, for the bladder infections, uh, kidney infections, we can utilize it on that. Uh, but not only that, then we can hit the uh, diathermy for the thymus and the spleen. Oh. And the thymus is, a, uh, is an area that produces uh, a certain portion of our white blood cell the spleen is an area where there is a lot of uh, detoxification. One of the things that you can, uh, if someone uh, has Epstein Barr virus, uh, mm-hmm. a mono, you know, the spleen is always very sore because it's overtaxed with the virus that's coming through. Right. So we can put diathermy over that spleen and the pain goes away. And there's an increased ability of the body by hitting the spleen and the thymus at the same time the immune system gets supercharged and you can get rid of a lot of viruses very quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, Matter of fact, people who have the uh, chronic uh, mono Epstein-Barr virus uh, fatigue can get immediate relief with the treatment, uh, the dual treatment of the thymus and the spleen and can get uh, uh, very, very quick results Mm -hmm. with that and a decrease in the in the actual infection, a improvement in the balancing of the immune system, and uh, uh, an immediate release of the uh, chronic fatigue that they're feeling. So, you know, I'm listening to you talk about all the things that diathermy benefits. Why don't we see it in all doctors' offices? <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes you it makes you wonder because it's a, a very safe, uh, very easy mm-hmm. type of a treatment, and often t- in because of all the different things that it did, it was oversold at the beginning. Yeah, you, you know there was it was con, it was let touted, the product speak for itself. Yeah, yeah. it was touted as a cure all. Yeah, and it, it's an understanding of what it does. It, it increases circulation. Uh, it uh, increases the lymphatic flow. And if you can understand it in that type of a way and understand it's actually the body that's helping it, then you get a better feel on when to use it and when not to use it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a reasonable expectation, uh, a knowledge of what's going on, not relying on it solely. Mm-hmm. Right. And not making, in not making claims that are out there and wild uh, as a cure-all for everything. Right. 
we never use just diathermy in any of our, our treatments. We, we approach the body in a structure function manner mm-hmm. where we're looking at the entire system and providing all the different types of needs that are necessary for the uh, changes that take place. Mm-hmm. So providing the homeostasis, providing the, uh, the treatments that are necessary, then we can get the changes that uh, need to be accomplished. So when should someone seek help um, with the diathermy unit? Uh, people should uh, specifically, uh, you know, if you have a child with otitis media, <laughs> don't, don't put them on antibiotic. Come in and get a diathermy treatment, any mm. type of chronic lung problems, any circulatory problems, uh, congestion, uh, toxicity, uh, chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr. Those are the things that you should definitely seek a diathermy. Mm. Very interesting, um, Dr. Prather, on the diathermy unit and its benefits today. Thank you. We're out of time for this week. The Prather Practice is located at 8902 North Meridian Street on the north side of Indianapolis, just south of the I-465 loop. If we can help you to achieve better health, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with our office at 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Join us again here next week or anytime on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com for The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather.